A very warm welcome to all our viewers. This is Anjali from Simply Learn, and today we'll dive into a tutorial on the configuration management tool Chef. So, if you look at the DevOps approach or the DevOps lifecycle, you will see that Chef falls under operations and deployment. So, before we begin, let's have a brief look at all that you'll learn today. First, we'll get to know why should we use Chef and what exactly is the Chef. Two of the most common terms used with Chef, configuration management and infrastructure as code. We'll have a brief look at these. We'll also have a look at the components of Chef and the Chef architecture. Quickly go through the various flavors of Chef. And finally, we'll wrap it up with a demo. A demo on the installation of Apache on our nodes. So let's begin guys. Why should we use Chef? Well, consider a large company. Now this company caters to a large number of clients and provides n number of services or solutions. Of course, to get all of this done, they need a huge number of servers and a huge number of systems. Basically, they will have a huge infrastructure. Now, this infrastructure needs to be continuously configured and maintained. In fact, when you're dealing with an infrastructure that size, there's a good chance systems may be failing. And in the long run, as your company expands, new systems may even get added. So what do you do? Well, you could say the company has the best system administrator out there, but all by himself, could he possibly take care of an infrastructure that size? No, he can't. And that's where Chef comes in. Because Chef automates this entire process. So what does Chef provide? Chef provides continuous deployment. So when you look at the market space today, you see how products and their updates are coming out in a matter of days. So it's very important that a company is able to deploy their product the minute it's ready. So that once it's out, it's not already obsolete. Chef also provides increased system robustness. As we saw, Chef can automate the infrastructure. But in spite of this automation, there's a good possibility that errors do creep in. Chef can detect all these bugs and remove them before deploying them into the real environment. Not only this, Chef also adapts to the cloud. We all know how today the services, tools, solutions, everything's revolving around the cloud. So Chef does really play along by making itself easily integratable with the cloud platform. So now that you know why to use Chef, let's look at what exactly is Chef. Chef is an open source tool developed by Opscode. Of course, there are paid versions of Chef such as Chef Enterprise. But other than that, most of it is freely accessible. Chef is written in Ruby and Erlang. If you would have gone through any previous material on Chef, I'm sure you would have come across Ruby being related to Chef, but not Erlang. So this is why, because Ruby and Erlang are both used to build Chef, but when it comes to actually writing the codes in Chef, it's just Ruby. And these are the codes that's deployed onto your multiple servers and does the automatic configuration and maintenance. And this is why Chef is a configuration management tool. So I've used this term configuration management a couple of times. What exactly does this mean? Let's start with the definition of configuration management. Configuration management is a collection of engineering practices that provides a systematic way to manage entities for efficient deployment. So let's break this down. Configuration management basically is a collection of practices. And what are these practices for? These practices are for managing your entities, the entities which are required for efficient deployment. So what are these entities that you need for efficient deployment? They are code, infrastructure and people. Code is basically the code the system administrators write for configuring your various systems. Infrastructure is the collection of your systems and your servers. And then finally, you have the teams that take care of this infrastructure. So codes need to be updated whenever your infrastructure needs a new configuration or some sort of updation in the operating system or the software versions. Your code needs to be updated at first. And as the requirements of the company change, the infrastructure's configuration needs to change. And finally, of course, the people need coordination. So if you have a team of system administrators and say person A makes some change to the code, person B, C, D and so on need to be well aware when the change is made as to why it was made, what was the change made and where exactly this change was made. So there are two types of configuration management. On our left, we have the push configuration. Here the server that holds the files with instructions to configure your nodes pushes these files onto the node. So the complete control lies with the server. On your right side, we have the pull configuration. In case of pull configuration, the nodes pull against the server to first check 
if there's any change in the configurations required. If there is, the nodes themselves pull these configuration files. Chef follows pull configuration. And how it does this, we'll see further in our video. Another important term often used with Chef, infrastructure as code. So let's understand what this term infrastructure as code means through this small story. So here's Tim. Tim's a system administrator at a large company. Now he receives a task. He has to set up a server and he has to install 20 software applications over it. So he begins. He sets up the server, but then it hits him. It would take him the entire night to install 20 software applications. Wouldn't things have been much simpler if he just had a code to do so? Well, of course, codes do make things much simpler. Codes have a number of advantages. They're easily modifiable. So if today Tim is told we need MySQL installed on 20 systems, Tim simply writes a code to do so. And the very next day Tim is told we changed our mind. We don't need MySQL. I think we'll just use Oracle. This does not bother Tim because now he just opens the file. He makes a few corrections in his code and that should work just fine. Code is also testable. So if Tim had to write 10 commands to do something and at his 10th command he realized the very first command he wrote, there was something not right there. Well, that would be quite tiresome, wouldn't it? With codes, however, you can test it even before running it and all the bugs can be caught and corrected. Codes are also deployable. So they're easily deployable and they're deployable multiple times. So now that we saw the various advantages of having codes, let's see what infrastructure as code exactly is. Here's the definition. Infrastructure as code is a type of IT infrastructure where the operation team manages the code rather than a manual procedure. So infrastructure as a code allows the operations team to take care of a code which automatically performs various procedures rather than having to manually do those procedures. So with this feature, all your policies and your configurations are written as code. Let's now look at the various components of Chef. So our first component is the workstation. The workstation is the system where the system administrator sits. He or she creates the codes for configuring your nodes. Now these codes, which in case of Chef are written in Ruby, are called the recipes. And you'll have multiple number of recipes. So a collection of recipes is called a cookbook. Now these cookbooks are only created at the workstation, but they need to be stored at the server. So the knife is a command line tool so it's basically a command that you will see us executing in one of our demos that shifts these cookbooks from the workstation over to the server. A second component is the server. So server is like the middleman. It lies between your workstation and your nodes. And this is where all your cookbooks are stored. Because as you saw previously, the knife sends these cookbooks over from the workstation to the server. The server can be hosted locally, that's on your workstation itself, or it can be remote. So you can have your server at a different location. You can even have it on the cloud platform. And a final component, the node. So nodes are the systems that require the configuration. In a chef architecture, you can have a number of nodes. Ohai is a service which is installed on your node and it is responsible for collecting all the information regarding your current state of the node. This information is then sent over to the server to be compared against the configuration files and check if any new configuration is required. Chef Client is another such service on your node which is responsible for all the communications with the server. So whenever the node has a demand for a recipe, the Chef Client is responsible for communicating this demand to the server. Since you have a number of nodes in a chef architecture, it's not necessary that each node is identical. So of course, every node can have a different configuration. Let's now have a look at the chef architecture. So here we have a workstation, one server machine and two nodes. You can have any number of nodes. First things first, the system administrator must create a recipe. So the recipes that are mentioned in our chef architecture are just dummy recipes. We we'll look into actual functioning recipes later in our demo. So you have one recipe, two recipes, three recipes and a collection of recipes forms a cookbook. So guys, if you look at the recipe in source, you have simply learn 3.erb. ERB is the extension for your Ruby files. So the cookbooks are only created at the workstation. They now need to be sent over to the server where they are stored. 
and this is the task of the knife. Knife is a command line tool which is responsible for transferring all your cookbooks onto the server from the workstation. Here's the command for running your knife. Knife upload simply-db, where simply-db is the name of the cookbook. We then move on to our node machines. At our nodes, we run the OHI service. The OHI service will collect all information regarding the current state of your nodes and send it over to the chef client. When you run the chef client, these informations are sent over to the server and they are tested against the cookbook. So if there is any discrepancy between the current state of your nodes and the cookbook, that is, if one of the nodes does not match the configurations required, the cookbook is then fetched from the server and executed at the node. This sets the node to the right state. There are various flavors of Chef. We'll quickly go through these. First, we have Chef Solo. With Chef Solo, there's no separate server, so your cookbooks are located on the node itself. Now, this kind of configuration is used only when you have just a single node to take care of. The next flavor is a hosted chef. With hosted chef, you still have your workstation and your node, but your server is now used as a service on the cloud. This really makes things simple because you don't have to set up a server yourself and it still performs all the functioning of a typical chef. This is the configuration you will notice that we'll be using in our demo. Chef Client Server With Chef Client Server, you have a workstation, you have server and you have n number of nodes. Now this is the traditional chef architecture. This is the one we have used for all the explanations previously. And finally, we have Private Chef. Private Chef is also known as Enterprise Chef. In this case, your workstation, server and node all are located within the enterprise infrastructure. This is the main difference between Chef Client Server and Private Chef. In case of Chef Client Server, all these three machines could be dispersed. The enterprise version of Chef also provides the liberty to add extra layers of security and other features. And we reach the final part of our video where we'll have the hands-on. So before we dive into our demo, let me just quickly give you an introduction to it. We'll be using two virtual boxes, both CentOS 7. One will be used as a workstation while the other will be a node. So we are just using one node to make things simple. The server will be used as a service on the cloud. Now these are the steps we'll be performing during our demo. We'll first download and install the Chef DK on our workstation. We then make an empty cookbook file and we'll write a recipe into it. We need to then set up the server. So as I mentioned earlier, server will be a service on the cloud. So you'll have to create a profile, but this will be completely free. We then link the workstation to the server and will upload the recipe to the server. The nodes will now download the cookbooks from the server and configure themselves. So now that you have some idea about what we'll be doing, let's move on to the actual demo. We begin our demo. Here's my Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. I have two machines here. I've already created my workstation and node. Both of these are sent to a seven machines. Just for you to differentiate, this is my terminal. And for my workstation, it's a black background with white text. And as of my node, it's a black background with green text. The first thing you do is you go to your workstation box and open a web browser, search for Chef DK installation. Go to the first link, which is your chef's official page and under Red Hat Enterprise, because our system's a Red Hat system, select the link of the version that you're using. So I'm using CentOS 7. So my operating system version is 7. So I'll take this link. Now this is the link for downloading your chef DK. You copy this link and go to your terminal. Guys, notice I'm in the home directory of my root user. So let's install our Chef DK. And it's getting installed. Now this will take some time because it's quite a large file. And Chef DK is downloaded. Next step, we need to install it. And this is the version of the Chef DK that we have downloaded. So type the same. Okay, so that's done. So now we need to make our recipes and the recipes will exist within cookbooks. 
So first let's make a shelf repository. So within that we'll have a folder for holding all our cookbooks and within our cookbook we'll write our recipe. So we start with the directory for chef repository. Move into it. Create a folder called cookbooks within which we'll store each of our cookbooks. Move into this folder. Okay, so we'll just check the contents here right now. So we have our chef DK. We have a chef repo folder here. And let's check the contents of this chef repo. And this has cookbooks. Okay, so our first cookbook that we'll be making will be under this folder cookbooks. So let's move into cookbooks. We are in. Now we need to create our first cookbook. So the instruction for creating your first cookbook is chef generate cookbook and the name of your cookbook. So I'm just giving the name as sample. Yeah, so our cookbook sample is created. Now when you create your cookbook, you'll notice that a hierarchy is also automatically created. So let's just check the hierarchy of our cookbook. Let's move into sample. And tree is the command for checking the hierarchy. So here, as you can see, we have recipes and under recipes, we have default.rb. So we'll be editing this default.rb to create our recipe. Okay, so let's begin with that. Let's move into our recipes folder and open your default.rb. And here we are. So now we'll type in our code. So what's our recipe for? Our recipe is for installing the HTTPD package on our node and then we'll also create a small index file where we'll just have a simple content such as welcome or something like that just to check if our HTTPD is working fine. So let's begin typing the code here package HTTPD service HTTPD do and what must be done with this package is that once it's installed it needs to be enabled and it needs to be started and so that's our first task our next task is creating our html file so as you know all your html files will follow this path name and this is the content of your file you have successfully configured your node and that's it that's a simple code so our recipe is now ready save it and exit back to your terminal now what we need to do is that we need to configure our server so go to your browser on the search engine type manage.chef.io so as I mentioned earlier, we'll be using a server as a service on the cloud. So you'll enter your login page for the chef server. Most of you may not have a profile already. So you go to click here to get started and fill in the details. It's just like creating an account on Facebook. So I already have my account. I've put in the credentials here. I'll just sign in. Now the first thing once you sign in, is you'll get an option to create an organization. So all you have to do there is you got to enter the name of your organization and just below that there's another box for entering a short form of your organization. Now my organization name was simply learn and the short form was SLP123. So when you come to the administration tab under organization you can see this organization name. Next step click on this arrow and you got to download your starter kit. Okay, so once you click on down starter kit, you'll come to this page where there's a button for download starter kit. So do download it. Save the file. So now come back to your terminal. So you come back to your terminal and next what you need to do is you need to unzip your chef starter.zip. So for that first we'll move our chef starter to the root. So it's currently present under the downloads folder. Let's move it. So we have moved our chef starter.zip. 
Now let's unzip it. First, let's just check the contents of our root directory right now. So we have a chef repository, chef repo fi uh, folder that we created, the chef starter zip that we just moved, and of course the chef DK. So now we can unzip our chef starter kit. And that's done. So our next step, we got to move the chef starters.zip file into our cookbooks, which lies inside the chef repository. This is done because we'll be executing our further commands to connect our workstation with the server from the cookbooks, because that is where our sample cookbook is. And that's moved. So now we'll run a knife command. So what knife does is that it uploads your recipes or your cookbooks onto the server. So here's the command for running your knife. Samples the name of the cookbook that you're uploading and uploading sample 0.1.0 and uploading sample. Yeah, so our cookbook is uploaded. Now let's just check this at our server. How we do that is go back to your browser where you have opened your server. So there's no node here yet because we have not configured our node with the server, but we have configured our workstation with the server. And you see here our cookbooks uploaded sample. So our workstation and our server are connected. So now we need to connect our node with the server. So first we move on to our node machine. We need to take the IP address of our node machine. So for the IP address, we'll just type if config. Right. So this is your IP address. 192.168.2.190 note this down somewhere guys now that's done go back to your workstation i'll just keep it this way so i can see both okay go back to your workstation's terminal but this time to connect our server with the node so we have taken the ip of our node and this is where we'll be using it 192.168.2 point the username which is root in our case and then enter the password and then finally you enter your node name so this is the name that will appear for this particular node on our server i'm just giving it chef node you can give it whatever you like we'll just check the command knife bootstrap the IP address, SSH user, our user, which is root, SSH password, the password for the root, and finally the node name. And the node's getting created. So once the node is connected to your server, we'll go back to our browser, open our server service on the cloud. And we'll check the node tab. So ideally, your node name should appear there. Great. So our node is added. Also, if you notice here, our chef client service on the node has started running. So let's just check this with the server. Go to your nodes. And here we go. So chef node, a CentOS 7 platform this is our ip so it's all done so now we need to add a cookbook to the run list of this node so come here click on this arrow edit run list here's sample this is the cookbook that we want to run on our node put on the current run list and here we have the run button just click on that so this should have transferred our cookbook onto the node let's check that go to your node machine clear this we need to be the root. Let's run the chef client service. So we are running it once again because after it was started, we did add something to our run list. The changes in the run list is updated. So in 1 minute 56 seconds, our cookbook has run on our node so the configuration changes should have been made let's check that 
it's pretty simple just go to your browser on the search engine just type localhost and here's our HTML page that we created on our workstation congrats you configured your first node and I really hope you did so that is the end of our demo we have successfully installed the HTTPD package on our node and we have also executed a HTML file. So with that, we come to an end to our video. Now let's have a quick look at everything you learned today. First, you saw why you should probably use Chef. Then what exactly is the Chef? We looked into the two most important terms often used with Chef, configuration management and infrastructure as code. We also saw the various components of Chef and how these components work together to provide the capabilities that Chef does. We looked into the four flavors of Chef and finally we wrapped it up with the demo on installing HTTPD package on our node and also writing a simple HTML file. So I hope you guys really liked the video. If you did, please do hit the like button. Also subscribe to our channel if you have not yet because we have a lot of good stuff coming up. This is Anjali signing off. Thank you. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.